to D&D Beyond, and I am deliriously excited because we are one week out from the release of Critical Role Call of the Netherdeep, the first full-length campaign adventure set in the world of Exandria for us to play at our tables. And here to tell me all about it, please welcome two of the contributors who made it amazing. Uh, we have, I, I, I want to do both your intros at once. I stumbled over it because I'm very excited to have you both here, but I've, we've got writer for Critical World Call of the Nether Deep and associate game designer for D&D Studio, Mackenzie DeArmas. Welcome. Hello, hello. And Thank you so much for having me. So thrilled to have you here, have you back on the channel, but my first time getting to talk to you. And of course, mm -hmm. uh, a big warm welcome that I'm going to go back and look at chat for because I hope y'all are properly appreciating the joy of the occasion. Please welcome back to the D&D Beyond stream. James Hake, project co-lead for Critical Role Call of the Netherdeep. Hey there. Uh, I'm I am so excited to be back on the D&D Beyond channel. It's it's been far, far, far too long. I am so thrilled to have you both here. And first of all, you are parts of a, a large and amazing team that brought this book to life. But I am so grateful that you both could take some time to come and chat with us all about it. Um, so let's start with just the basics. If you just wandered here, you're on Twitch, you're hitting buttons, you want to know what's going on, and you're like, what's a Call of the Netherdeep? James, what is Critical Role Call of the Netherdeep? Okay, Critical Role Call of the Netherdeep is a brand new uh, full-length D&D adventure that will take player characters uh, from level 3 to roundabouts level 13, depending on how many side quests, etc. you wind up doing, uh, that starts in the uh the wastes of Jorhas, as you saw in Critical Role's second campaign, uh, to the great desert oasis city on Corel, the Jewel of Hope, uh, in Marquette, setting of Critical Role's third campaign, and to a dark and watery realm known as the Nether Deep, which uh has its roots all the way back in some of Matt's oldest notes, but has never been uh seen yet. In uh, in any critical role media prior to this, I don't think I knew um, that about the the ancient notes origins. <laughs> it's uh, it's incredible the sort of things that you're able to find when Matt Mercer gives you access to his early early notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing it like climbing into the chambers of somebody's head, like in Lock and Key, where you're like, "What's behind this door? Oh dear." <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, that it's, right. it's exactly like yep. that. Yeah, I mean, Mac, yeah, you you were you were on calls with Matt with me when we were making this book. Mm -hmm. um, it is yep. it is a labyrinthine, dark Soulsian dungeon of information <laughs> within there. And sometimes you open a door and it's just three question marks, and you're like, Matt, Matt, what do I do? And he goes, I don't know. Have fun. <laughs> you're like, woohoo! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> Yes. That's yeah, absolutely like. fantastic. Mackenzie, can you talk about um what has been so like is is there a, a what's the quick version of how this project came to be? Oh, um so there is um I'm trying to think about how to answer this without like going into spoilers. Um it's very much like started out as uh like the the adventure for um set in the world of Exandria, and it sort of ballooned feels like the wrong word, but it just, it grew in the best way possible into this absolutely expansive, uh, truly almost mythical kind of adventure that spans this impressive, immersive world that people who know about a uh, Critical Role and are very into the lore, or people who maybe have never seen Critical Role, never touched it, don't, and maybe don't even ever plan on on watching or setting aside that time to uh, watch those streams and, and stuff. It is this beautiful, expansive journey, um, and we got so lucky to bring on such a wonderful team of writers to all take their own spin on different elements of uh, Exandria. Uh, myself, along with Latia Keys, Sadie Lowry, Cassandra Ka, uh, all of us come from varying backgrounds of familiarity with critical role or, or or lack thereof. And being able to approach this storied world from this multitudinous perspective and bring it to life, to bring a to bring into our our um our expertises, uh our ability to create really lively, wonderful NPCs, to uh 
create very, very incredibly horrific and wonderful uh, dungeons. And it's all, it's, it's just like a beautiful symphony, 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 I can talk, symphony of, of a world that is so classically fantasy and also new. And I just, I love it so much. And if I can oh, jump in there, uh, yes, I, I'd love to talk a little bit about the, the way that this project started on, um, on, on a sort of top level uh, way too, mm -hmm. because, uh, Matt, uh, Chris Perkins, the story architect on the D&D team, and I were all very fresh off the release of uh, Explorer's Guide to Wildmount, uh, right as the, the pandemic hit. And uh, <laughs> a, a whole lot of things were very much in flux at the time. And uh, one of one of the things that we were planning to do to bring a little bit of i don't know order and stability to the world uh was uh it's time for a new critical role book uh explorer's guide to wild mount was really uh beloved i think by uh by critter fans who wanted to uh have their own game in wild mount and at that point we knew that campaign two was drawing to an end and a new third campaign would be beginning. Um, Matt was all very secretive about what was going to go on in that new campaign, but we knew it was based around uh, the continent of Marquette. And uh, Matt had a big idea for a story in his head and laid it out in very broad strokes for, for all of us. Um, and because I had worked with him on uh, not just Explorers Guide to Wildmount, but also uh, Teldoric Campaign Setting and its its revamped version, Teldoric Teldori Campaign Setting Reborn, that came out this year, uh, it was it was kind of a a, a no brainer for Matt to say let's let's have uh, let's have James come in and do this because uh, Matt Mercer has no time. Matt Mercer's time is is worth more than gold. What he does uh, it with Critical Role? He does it? <laughs> yeah. Goodness, could have surprised me. Maybe he's overseeing every aspect, every creative aspect of a gigantic, sprawling sort of fantasy world that's making books and comic books and a TV show and a live stream. And no, I'm sure he's flush with time. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we had the task. I love you, Matt. Basically, <laughs> I love him. I, I adore Matt. Um, but get some sleep. Uh, our, our goal here was to create an adventure that would do uh, kind of a lot of often conflicting things at once and make it all sing together. Uh, because uh, at the time of the book's beginning, we were still in campaign two, and we wanted to bring in people who really loved that world, that continent of Wildmount and Shorehouse, that land. Um, and we wanted, and we knew that campaign three was on the horizon, so we wanted to, to link it in with the story that people would have some familiarity with when the book actually released as well. But on, on the other hand, the third mutant hand, uh, we also wanted this book to be highly accessible to people who uh, weren't big Critical Role fans already. Um, not just because Wizards of the Coast was publishing this book and, you know, they're not beholden to... Uh, uh, you know, cater to critters, but also because Critical Role is a behemoth at this point. Hundreds upon hundreds of hours of content and television shows and uh, comic books and a novel now. And uh, you, you can't expect by any stretch of the imagination people who you want to bring into your, your critter camp to be familiar with all of Critical Role. And uh, it's, it's good to have everything be a nice little on-ramp for someone who's like, I want to get into Critical Role and I want to do it by playing a D&D &D adventure, then I want to say to those people, we have this right here for you. This is how you can get into Critical Role and find, like, fall in love with it in, in the way that we all did. I love that. So I would say, um, Mackenzie, if you are brand new to yes. the world of Critical Role, like James is suggesting, yes. why might you want to pick up this particular adventure book? Um, I've always seen this adventure uh, as the kind of adventure that growing up when I would read like very classical fantasy books like like The Lord of the Rings where it, it follows that epic journey across a massive sprawling continent across these different environments. Um, this is that kind of adventure that really strikes that chord. Um, this is very much a, a journey. Uh, 
Uh, when when we say call the nether deep, it is because you are following a call across the world, uh, starting from the town of, of Jigao to a demon city crawling with uh, remnants of the calamity and, and evil gods who once tried to take over the entirety of the world to suddenly teleporting to a continent and a half away in an entirely new environment, entirely different uh, weather, entirely different tone even. And I find that so rewarding as someone who has always wanted to explore that kind of that story where it has that big scope to it where you are uh, just one piece in this massive world and yet you and everything you do has those ramifications that echo throughout the entirety of the of the realm that you explore in there's also really fun in that uh, it kind of touches on a bunch of cool genres. You have uh, horror uh, in certain aspects. You have very classic uh, adventure shenanigans. Uh, you get, you can um, in uh, the big city of Ankarel get into more. Uh, I don't want to say like spy, but very much like uh, social encounters and exploring through like a massive cosmopolitan city and figuring out how to navigate that in ways where. Uh, shooty shooty bang bang smack 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 may not always work um and then you get to do underwater adventure and plumb into the depths of the uh titular nether deep and explore that combination of horror and almost like deep space journeying in the way that the real life uh, depths of the ocean are very similar to the real life depths of space in which we have no clue what's in either um terrifying and so it's, it's horrifying and it's wonderful 